Welcome back to the Nullified Take channel here on YouTube where I've got the TNT takes for you on Survivor 44 episode 3. That's right, I'm back. I do know that I'm dropping this top 5 takes a little bit later than usual. I like to drop them straight after the episode, but because we had Mike Turner on the podcast last week, it did throw my schedule out a little bit, but we're getting it in before Survivor 44 episode 4. In any case, uh, if you haven't checked out the podcast and live recap of Survivor 44 episode 3, it's about an hour and a half long. I had Mike Turner on the show talking about this season and also about his season a little bit. Uh, it's always great to have former players on the channel that can provide an additional uh, insight into the game because they have played this game before. So please go check that out on any of the podcasting platforms that you listen to. It could be Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, and so forth. And also be sure to rate us on those uh, podcasting channels because it does help with the algorithm putting our content out there for new audience listeners to discover. Okay, moving on to the top five takes here for this episode. We start off on takeaway number one, which is the Ticker tribe has got to do some damage control. Sarah's just been blindsided. Helen's voted out of the game. It was her ride or die in the game, the person she wanted to play with. And with her being voted out, Sarah is now on the outside of this tribe. And she very much knows it. So you see Yam Yam and both Carson trying to bring her back into the fold, keep her comfortable. Uh, but Sarah is very well aware that in a tribe of four people now, she's on the outs. If they do go to tribal council again, then she is probably going to be the next person voted out. And she's really worried because she says there's not many immunities that this tribe can win they're kind of one of the weaker tribes out there and it has to be a certain skill set maybe the puzzly type of things that they could win to try and get themselves intact to the merge so a miracle will have to save sarah at this stage and she does immediately see carson as someone that is a big threat in this game i think carson may be playing a little bit too hard too fast here it could come back to bite him in the back because i do think that sarah now is a mercenary for hire a vote for hire if she gets to emerge if she gets into a swap i would not be surprised if sarah tries to find new friends in one of these other tribes out there and uh, make a run for it deep into the game and i do hope that she does end up mixing it up because that's the type of survivor game i love to see someone that can jump back and forth uh, it's very hard to do and get to the end and win but at this stage she might as well throw it all on black at the roulette because i mean she is in trouble all right moving on to takeaway number two the Ratu tribe is fast becoming a tribe that I really love. They've got such great personalities in the tribe. And we start off with one of the biggest ones here right at the beginning of the episode with Kane singing the Canadian national anthem, being cheered on by his fellow American contestants. Absolutely love to see it. Love the fact that they made him feel comfortable to be himself out there. He grabs the immunity sword that they got and swings it around, pretending like he's a knight, saying, we're the five knights going up against the villains in Dungeons of Dragons. I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons person myself. I've got friends who have played it before. I love seeing Kane out there just enjoying life, enjoying the experience. And he's such a larger-than-life character, so it's really sad that I still think Kane or Brandon will be the next person out of the game i kind of think kane is probably in the biggest trouble but mike brought up something very interesting in the podcast when we spoke to him and he said that just being a likable person someone that can uh crack jokes and make people around you laugh that is actually extremely valuable in the game of survivor because you're out there for a long time we only get to see a snippet obviously on the show and anybody that lightens the mood or makes you enjoy your time out there a little bit more is probably likely to be chosen to go deeper in the game as someone that maybe isn't as fun to be around so maybe that is Kane's only option at this stage is to be the fun lovable Canadian that just has a lot of fun out there and hopefully he can sneak a little bit deeper into the game but let's talk about the other person I think I do think it's between Kane and Brandon uh, at this point so let's talk about Brandon Brandon this episode again we get a backstory of his and it does make me worried that we've seen that backstory I believe maybe even twice up until this point in three episodes does that mean that he potentially goes home early and that he actually is going to get voted out before for Kane. I don't know why I'm getting that feeling, but Brandon is someone that is definitely an asset to the tribe. He goes out there, catches fish for them, which is really important in this new 
school survivor season where you don't get as much rewards and food uh the provider has actually become important again and we see the fact that you know a lot of people judge him as this alpha guy and they put him in a certain box which i think society is extremely guilty of doing i see a lot of people out there these days really going after the alpha male archetype when uh, a lot of the times you know i've said it before on the podcast people who get into training people who get into bettering themselves physically are a lot of the times people who were bullied when they were in school and that 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 has motivated them to go and make more of their life. Not that I'm saying Brandon was bullied or anything like that. I don't know that backstory of his, but a lot of the times there's more to these people than what you can actually know. And um, I personally love the gym culture. I go to the gym as, lo- as well. I'm, I've always been a sports athlete person my whole life. And um, I've met some of the nicest people you'll ever get. People who really want you to do better and be better in life and who is a very positive role model. So I love Brandon. Personally, I think that he's a great character on this season as well. I'm just fearful that we're getting so much Brandon and Kane content for a reason and that one of these two are going to go very soon as well. Moving on to takeaway number three, we finally get a little bit of a sneak peek into the Soka hierarchy in this game. Uh, up until this point, it was very heavily focused on Matt and Franny's showmance and a little bit of Danny sprinkled on top of it. But in this episode, we kind of see where the allegiances sit. And it starts off early with Matt and Franny again talking about doing a road trip, having their usual, um, you know, experience out there flirting. And I do think the story for both Matt and Franny this season is going to be this showman's and they're both going to have this great experience playing the game. But I don't think they're winning the game. I've seen some people online say Franny is the winner. I, I don't see it. I actually think this episode wasn't good for Franny. She lost power because she lost Claire, who was the person she tried to keep in the game. I do think Franny is a capable game player that maybe is getting sidetracked a little bit by the match show. Uh, and that's not really helping. And Matt continues to just get L after L after L this episode because Danny goes and hides the key to the birdcage after he plants the fake idol. He then leads all of them onto this uh, fake key hunt because he already has it. And then Matt ends up finding the key and Danny outs him to the rest of the tribe. He even uses this information as a way to continue to further strengthen his bond with Heidi, letting her in on the information. And I think this comes in clutch when Heidi has to make a decision at the end of this episode about where she's going to go with her vote. And he does tell Heidi that Matt has got the idol. So at this point, it kind of changes the dynamic a little bit because Joss said that both Matt and Franny was going to go next. Uh, Both of them are on my... uh, draft team as well so i'm really happy that they didn't go and i'm really happy that they're getting scared about the fact that matt potentially has an idol and they change it up on claire by the end of this episode which i know there's a lot of people who weren't happy with that but from a very selfish point of view with my draft i was extremely happy to see it go that way now at this point you know danny is running circles around everybody and he has got his numbers and both heidi and also josh in the game and they now have matt and franny on the outside so i'm a little bit worried for franny potentially in this next vote she could be going home if they're afraid of matt potentially playing an idol and i don't think danny is going to tell any of his allies that he's got the real idol so that is going to make things very complicated if this tribe has to go back to tribal council in the next round takeaway number four um the production team and editing team love them you know i love being blindsided sometimes i don't like being blindsided at tribal council when somebody gets voted out and i don't know how that happened but i do like it when they blindside us within the actual episode and this episode was one of those ones where you see jamie being this wild child out there just a free spirit somebody with a lot of energy which i really enjoy seeing you know you want people to go out there and have this fun experience she is the plan mama to matthew's plan daddy out there and they are seen bonding going to the water well and jamie finds what she thinks is an idol and you know, the music and everything was this upbeat music like you would normally get when someone finds an idol. So they had me completely engaged and snowed in on the fact that Jamie has got the idol that was played and then rehidden in the game. But then they backtrack it to Matthew finding the idol two days ago and then going out and planting this fake idol for Jamie to find. And Matthew, again, similar to Danny, is playing this game at a different level. I love the hustlers. I love the people that play harder than anyone else when the other people are sleeping or, you know, socializing out there. These players are grinding. And he forms an alliance with Jamie based on this fake idol. And he now also has information on her so that if he needs to throw her under the bus, he can in the future. 
Love what Matthew's doing. I'm a little bit worried for him taking his arm out of the sling quite a lot. There's a lot of focus on that at the immunity challenge. And I do think that could come back to bite him in the game. I really hope he does not get medivac from this game. But he is one of those people that really, really is playing this game very hard at the moment. And love seeing this being played out there on the game. Moving on to the final takeaway here for this episode. Takeaway number five. Claire's voted out for sitting out of too many immunity challenges. Now, we see at this immunity challenge, Jeff is really annoyed at Claire saying you're sitting out again. And there's no rule against somebody sitting out from challenges, but you are taking a risk. Everything in Survivor is risk and reward. Every choice you make is risk and reward out there. And Claire is clearly showing her tribe at this point that she is someone that does not trust her own abilities to step up and compete in challenges. Now, I do think Claire is a pretty big fan of the show, and I feel so sad for her. My heart is broken for her that she got voted out before she even got to compete in a challenge. Because if I was ever to go out there, and again, I'm a different person to Claire, I love the sports physical activity type of thing, I would want to be at least in one immunity challenge before I'm voted out so I can say I've done it. So she's had this empty experience without even competing, which to me is so sad to see. But when the tribe goes back to the tribe camp after the immunity challenge, they have to make a decision on who to vote out. And Danny is pretty adamant that they need to vote Claire out because they want to keep their tribe strong going into the merge. They want the numbers. And Claire has not proven herself that she is capable. And he says she's the weakest. Now, online, I've seen people complain about the fact that he said that. How can he say she's the weakest when she hasn't even done anything? Well, it's the fact that she hasn't stood up. Mentally, she's been the weakest because you have to be mentally strong in the game and you can't show weakness. People are looking for anything to vote you out of this game. So if you're going to be sitting back saying, I'm not going to compete, people are going to look at that and say she doesn't have confidence in her own ability. Even though she says, I wanted to do the best thing for the tribe, you know, that's still not that encouraging for the tribe because next uh, challenge, when they lose someone, she may have to compete. And if she's competing in that challenge and she hasn't even had any rhythm or momentum going into it because she hasn't been competing in these, that's not a good thing for the tribe. So I understand why Dan Danny tried to get Claire out of this position. And I do actually think that strategically it was a very good move because Claire was seen to be working more with Franny and potentially Matt. Um, for some other reason, she wanted to target Matt, which was bizarre to me as well because there is a hidden scene of the three of them forming an alliance in the first episode. And I don't think that that was ever going to be a smart move. And Franny luckily puts her straight and says, we need Matt. He's someone that will do whatever we says, which I believe is the case. I think Franny can lead him around her pinky finger at this point, and he will do whatever she says. But, you know, this vote comes down to Heidi, really. And Claire talks to Heidi, tries to get her to swing their way. Heidi says, everybody wants, at this point, for Josh to be out of the game except for Danny. Danny is the person that stands between Josh going home and not. And because Danny is the person that Heidi trusts the most in the game, he gave her that bit of information about the idol, which I think was great social game from him. She feels closer to him and ends up voting Claire out of the game. Hats off to Claire for playing her shot in the dark at least and trying to make it interesting and trying to make it something that is not a, a foregone conclusion that she's going to go home sadly it doesn't work out for her this time uh, as well because we have only seen it play out correctly once but you know ultimately i feel sorry for claire i feel like she missed an opportunity to play this game a lot harder than what she did and um yeah, that's it. If you like this top five takes, if you want to see more of them in the future, please consider liking this video. Please consider commenting below with your own top five takes. What did you like? What didn't you like about this episode? And consider subscribing to the channel. Please, we're on our way to 2,000 subscribers. The more subscribers we get, the more great guests we can bring on, the more we can grow this channel, which I'm extremely passionate about. But for now, grab your torches, head back to camp. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.